if we actually grappled with the fact that sex negativity is what causes this type of behavior, then we could create a world where you know, the sex, the idyllically sex positive world, someone is able to pay conscious women to come and be drugged so that I can get my kink out, my, my fetish on having sex with other people. There's a consensual way to do that. going on everyone it's nina infinity welcome back to my channel for another segment of infinite cringe this is insanely cringe you guys so hang on to your hats because you go along you go along in your day you're going about your day and you think to yourself this world can't get any more crazier cringe and then the world this clown world is like hold my freaking triple cheeseburger with the size of freaking chili cheese fries and a massive super sized milkshake to go okay because that's what's going on today that's what we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about this article here that came across my feed sex positive fat activist says men with rape kink should be able to pay to drug consenting women how about new no? This is the lovely individual we're going to be discussing today. This is the person that's stuffing their face right here. The BBC is receiving backlash for airing a Bill Cosby documentary in which self-proclaimed fat sex therapists argued for allowing men to pay to be able to drug and have sex with women. What the frig is a fat sex therapist, guys? Can, can someone please let me know? what the hell that is if we actually grappled with the fact that sex negativity is what causes this type of behavior then we could create a world where an idyllically sex positive world someone is able to pay conscious women to come and be drugged so that i can get my kink out my fetish on having sex with unconscious people so in a lay uh, rashata war said in a segment there's a consensual way to do that uh no no, there isn't. That's called grape. This person, that was, by the way, that was a clip that I showed at the beginning of this video, and you saw it for yourself. It, this is this is very real. This person actually said this, but they came under heavy fire. They were called out for it. The BBC has been under fire for doing this. So they ended up apologizing on Instagram. So this is really funny and interesting. So following the airing of the episode, they posted a formal apology on Instagram writing, let me explain why I was wrong in regards to the comments made. Okay, please explain because you, your comments were batshit and crazy. A culture of sex negativity does not create the conditions for grape. It creates the conditions for sex shame. Cosby is not a case of sex shame. I endorsed violence against sex workers with these words, and I'm so sorry. Sex workers should be treated with respect. Consent is as vital as it is any other sexual encounter, Rashatwa wrote. I should not have discussed consensual non-consent and kink and BDSM in the context of Cosby. Grape is not a form of sexual deviance. Grape is an abuse of power. I want to practice in a mental health field where sex workers can work alongside sex therapists to rehabilitate problematic sexual behaviors, but this vision does not belong in a conversation about Grape or Cosby. Grape is about power, not consensual desire, Ashatwar continued. A person cannot consent to sex once they are incapacitated. Consent requires the ability to be withdrawn, and using substances to the point of unconsciousness limits this ability. This post is not discussing the consensual use of substances during sex, Ashatwar added. Being given substances without consent is violence cosby is an example of grape not bdsm or kink now here i'm gonna pause for a second and let you guys know that last night i had a really interesting discussion with melody mack shout out to her in our discussion last night on breaking the narrative we discussed kink and that i think that in in society this idea of kink shaming is bullshit we should bring it should be brought back like people should be shamed for having weird kinks and weird situations that are just being normalized now in such a society look i don't want want to know your fetishes. I don't want to know your kinks. I don't care about it. Don't post about it online. I don't give a shit. I don't want to know. Keep your kinks and weird stuff behind closed doors. No one needs to know about it. No one cares. Okay. That's, that's where I stand. I'm just like, I've had enough 
of the this oh uh, look don't kink shame don't kink shame why this is why society is in this degenerate place that it is now because people stopped kink shaming so all these freaking weirdo degenerates were like oh, okay so like everyone's okay now with all this weird shit right right no no well i'm not okay with it i don't know about you but i'm not okay with it i'm not and then people wonder why grooming and things like that are so acceptable now in schools and we have to actually pass laws to get people to not do that to kids it's freaking absolutely insane rashatwa's website states that rashatwa who lists they he pronouns is a clinical social worker sex therapist public speaker community organizer and donut lover my god I actually, I clicked on this and here's their website. I clicked on it because I thought this person, that they can't be going by they, he, like this must be a typo because it's clearly a woman, but no, it's not a typo. This person's just mentally deranged. This person is a they, he, an award-winning clinical social worker, sex therapist, and adjunct lecturer, and grassroots organizer based in Philly, it's in New Jersey and Pennsylvania, and they are super fat, queer, bisexual, non-binary therapist, and co-owner of Radical Therapy Center. Look, I don't know where this person got their degrees from and who's handing out awards to this person, but there's an issue here, okay? This person should be in no position whatsoever to give mental health advice. This is the craziest thing I've ever heard. The patients are running the asylum, people. This is absolutely insane. I can't with this stuff anymore. I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I can't. I, I, I'm so over the ena enabling. I'm so over all of this. Rasha Tawar came under fire in 2018 for speaking at a University of Vermont in which a flyer for the event stated that thinness is a white privilege beauty ideal with others stating that literally throw your scale in the trash and we cannot have conversations on body image and fatness without race, disability, and class analysis, according to Breibart. In an Instagram post on Tuesday, Rasha Tawar wrote that BMI is used as a tool to measure how pure, thin, and good, or sinful, and fat, and bad a person is, so a society can determine whether you have value or not. That's untrue and based on absolutely nothing but bullshit that this person is just made up. This person is just fabricating stuff and selling it to you. Becoming super fat has informed my perspective here. Being super fat in public is a lot harder than when I was a small fat. Oh my God, it's like they just kept eating. Fat calling, painful waiting room chairs with restrictive arms, slim restaurant booths, narrow grocery store aisles, tiny bathroom, cultural, cultural events with those seating options, organizing meetings in space with stairs, etc. cetera. Rasha Torah added, oh my God, oh my God. It's like, just get some willpower, man. Get some willpower, go out, walk, go for a walk every day for 10, 15 minutes. Stop eating sugar. Stop stuffing your face with all this carbs. It's just, it's not that hard. It's really not that hard. My God. In another post, Rasha Tavor wrote, people will try to convince you that fat isn't natural. Who's trying to say fat is natural? Fat's natural. I mean, we all have natural fat. It's just when it's excessive fat, that's when it becomes a problem. And you have excessive fat, lady. But don't let him fool you. Fatness is all around us. Where's she going with this? Never out of a place in nature. The rolling hills. Trees too wide to hug. Animals we admire simply for their impressive size. Elephants, whales, and bears. What? Did she just compare herself to a whale? Did that just happen? <laughs> oh my god. No. This can't be real. Rashata War advertises events on Instagram, including the Anti-Diet Liberation Support Circle and Fat Liberation Conversation and Intersectional Discussion and Sexing the Fat Body. <laughs> Oh my god! I can't believe this is real. In February, Philadelphia Inquiry piece, Rasha Tawar spoke in terms like 
a romantic, demisexual, and gray asexual, stating that in offering these terms to clients, Rasha Tawar sees this expression of relief that they have a word that offers space to explore what they're feeling. Uh, no, that's called enabling mental illness. You're not helping these people. You're just enabling their crazy, just like people enabled your crazy. And now you're just handing out advice. <laughs> this world. Ideals about fluid sexuality and expansive gender have existed forever pre-white European colonization. Oh man, those white people. Queerness was woven into the Hindu mythology I grew up reading. I feel so affirmed and excited to have new language because it extends our shared understanding of the human sexual experience, Rasha Tawar told the Inquirer. Okay then, Rasha Tawar told the Enquirer that Rasha Tawar identifies as non-binary butch masculine of center, but also I have a pretty expansive experience of gender. For example, I still feel very comfortable being called sister, daughter, granddaughter. I have short hair and often dress in more masculine of center, even natural way. I'm just going to go out on a wild guess here and say that this person's just too lazy to dress up, put on makeup and, you know, have long hair. Having long hair is a lot of work it's not like having short hair is, there's no work you're just lazy you're a lazy person you're a lazy person you don't want to get up you don't want to make yourself up you don't want to make yourself get up and go walk you don't want to get up and go, you don't you just don't want to get up that's your issue <laughs> but still sometimes i wear dresses and makeup well that's good that's good my experience of gender are really impacted by growing up as a fat kid because fatness is inherently queering of gender. What? What does that even mean? Again, this is more made up shit. I've read articles by writer and activist Hunter Shackelford where they talk about growing up as a young fat black girl and needing to shop in the boys section because the clothes would fit better. But how that experience alone has this queering or expanding effect. What? This, this is called word salad, guys. But I also shop in the boys section. I go to the boys section in Walmart because they have the best superhero outfits. So I have several shirts that are boys size 8 to 10. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, I shop in the boys section all the time. In response to the BBC's airing of the episode, director of Big Brother Watch, Silky Carlo, wrote, First is a great apologism narrative, not a fact that sex negativity causes men to drug and rape women. What on earth were BBC Two thinking broadcasting this without balance or challenge, let alone in a documentary about victims and survivors? Second, consent can be withdrawn at any time sex where someone is drugged incapacitated and unconscious however you address it is not consensual ever and it's not a kink it's grape it's beyond belief and extremely dangerous that this has been broadcast without challenge i mean this is just beyond belief that this person's giving out mental health advice it's beyond belief that this person is going around to colleges and speaking to young impressionable people and giving them mental health advice. It's insane. Uh, and this is not the first or second time this person's said really messed up stuff. There's another article that I found. This one is from, I think, 2019. Yeah, 2019. Fat sex therapist seriously compares fitness instructors to Yahtzees during a speech at a college. Yeah, this person was just going around the country just giving speeches about health. So this person went to a college and said, I truly believe that a child cannot consent to being on a diet the same way a child cannot consent to having sex. She said in her two hour speech at a college main stage, we should be critical of the use of science and the production of knowledge to continue promoting this idea that certain bodies are fit, able, and desirable. Is it my fatness that causes my high blood pressure or is it my experience of weight stigma she asked the audience uh i got news for you it's your weight okay <laughs> it's not the stigma it's your weight oh my god she then took it further calling the science that stated that obesity is unhealthy fat phobic science saying that it's often actually eugenic science eugenic science is yahtzee science now 
this is so funny because all these weird fat people, this is like 20, this is 2019. So when 2020 came around, all of them became so science oriented all of a sudden. Oh my God, you gotta wear your mask because science said so. Because you're gonna make me die. So you better wear your fucking mask. But when it comes to maybe you should work out, lose some weight, that's Yahtzee science. I do. The selective outrage, right? I do not think it's surprising that the man who shot up Christchurch, New Zealand, was also a fitness instructor. She actually went there. I cannot believe she said that. Rasha Tawar said, adding that the shooting was a clear communication that there's still an idealized body. What a weirdo! Yahtzees really love the idea of an idealized body. And so it makes a lot of sense to me that a fitness instructor might also think about an idealized body in the thin white supremacist way. What a weirdo. The two hour speech was sponsored by the college's wellness center, women and gender studies department, of course, and the center for equity and inclusion. And the topic was radical fat liberation. My God, this is what people are learning at freaking colleges today, guys. This is why the world is in the state that it is because weirdo people with mental illness are going around giving health advice and therapy to other people. This is actually insane and I don't even know what to say anymore except for the fact that I think all of these people need to be made fun of. We need to make as much fun as possible of these people because the only thing I can think of to battle this crazy is through memes, through jokes. I mean, she already compared herself to a whale. So, I mean, the joke is, it's already there, guys. It's already there. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you smash the like, share the video far and wide, and also write your comments down below, maybe with your best joke. <laughs> please make me laugh because, oh my God, we really need the laughter around here. We really, really do. Thank you, everybody, for watching. You guys have a fantastic day or night, wherever you are, and I'll see you next time. Bye!